Alrighty, welcome back. This class is about the calculator. This brings us to the calculator. Trust me when I say this, this can make or break your quantitative reasoning section and thus by extension, your entire UCAT score. What I'm not gonna tell you is about learning what the M plus button does, what M minus does, what MRC does. Yes, I get it. These can be helpful, but they can also get very confusing in my opinion and generally not necessary for a top QR score. Okay. The calculator we get to use is very unforgiving anyways. So in my opinion, it's better to play it safe. Of course, if you are interested, there are YouTube videos explaining this, but this is not what this class is about. What this is about is developing accuracy and speed with that calculator. It is not using the top row that you have on that um, keyboard, but using the numpad instead and learning also how to save steps within the calculator. Okay. So a lot of you are probably sitting there right now with this kind of keyboard in front of you. That's completely fine, right? But a lot of you, a lot of you are out there using this keyboard for your mocks and QR practice. And that's specifically where the problem lies. Okay. You see on the day of the exam, this is the kind of keyboard you will get. So it's good to get used to the tools that you'll have on the day, right? Now, there are some of you that have access to a keyboard like this, a luxury, and still elect to use what I've highlighted here in red, the top row. And look, I get it. It's what we're all used to since we were young. We have some sort of comfort with this familiarity of using the top row, right? But if you truly want your quantitative reasoning score to really be the highest that it can, then I'm afraid it's time to cut ties with that top row and instead turn our attention to our numpad here. See, most of the elite QR scorers are comfortable with their calculators and their fine motor skills using the numpad. And almost all of these high scorers use this numpad on the side of the keyboard instead of the top row. Why? Because you get to minimize the amount of space your fingers have to travel to input numbers. You might come back and tell me, well, when you're not actually saving that much time at all. What's the difference? Count with me. One, two, three. Okay, that was a pretty short period of time, right? Three seconds. And I think we'd all agree that that's roughly the amount of time you could save per question if you use the numpad instead of the top row. That's what I'd gauge it to be anyways. Okay, sure. But what is three seconds to you? It's a tiny amount of time. Well, QR is a section where you are probably gonna be using the calculator for almost every single question you come across, a bar of you. Three seconds times 36 questions, that gives us 108 seconds. Or if you round that around one and a half minutes. Would you agree with me that an extra 1.5 minutes at the end of your QR section would be very useful, especially for those harder, more complex questions? I think so, okay? So definitely, I would encourage you guys to use that number. If you're still clicking in the numbers instead of using the keyboard like uh, this, please stop, <laughs> just stop. Because the amount of time you're wasting in this section just by clicking in those numbers is absolutely beyond imagination. If you are using a laptop keyboard and you don't have access to an external keyboard, please invest in an external keyboard with a numpad now, okay? Because it is potentially the number one investment you can make for your UCAT. Just have a look at this. This was the exact same keyboard I put up on screen earlier, okay? Officeworks, 12 bucks. Let me ask you, would you pay 12 bucks to increase your QR score and your total UCAT score by say 50 to 80 points? Because that's truly what I believe using the numpad can give you. You know, for me, it's a no brainer. So if you do have the luxury of having an external keyboard, then transition into using that numpad if you're not already, because yes, it will be awkward at first, but trust me, it is so worth it at the end in terms of the speed that it gives you. And then from then on, from there, we wanna be practicing speed and accuracy with the numpad. And then you might be at the stage where you're doing all of that and ask, Okay, but how do I actually practice using the numpad? 
And here we are. This is a very simple website with one purpose, and that is to improve your speed and accuracy. No sponsors, no nothing. I found this while I was practicing for my own QR, and this is exactly what I used. You can choose to go with the default settings here that it gives you. This way, you will be able to test more of your mental math side of things, which is obviously a great thing. We want to be using a lot of mental maths if we can in our QR section. And you know, just some tips, in the actual QR, there is a lot of scope for using mental maths. So if you're not already, I would highly recommend just trying to brush up on mental maths daily if you can, okay? But if mental maths gets in the way, you could use these settings instead. This just makes you think about speed way more mental maths no longer bogs you down you know hopefully hopefully we don't have to think twice about adding one to eight or our 12 times tables okay this is how i personally developed my speed with the numpad with these exact settings just trying to improve every time on my score okay this seems incredibly easy okay and incredibly simple but that's because it is this is something a year three could do and yet this is part of a reason why I achieved a perfect 900 in QR. Okay. So hopefully you've taken away a lot of good information about the calculator, especially from this class. And what I hope for you to do is bring that into your practice. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot of practice from when you watch this video until the day of your UCAP. And you want to be doing that practice with the best tools that you can. And that is that numpad on that external keyboard. Thank you. See you next time.